Hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. It is a wet and horrible day here in the UK, but it is the perfect day to be talking about wet whistles. Now, one of the questions that gets thrown around the tin whistle community a lot is, how do I stop my whistle from clogging? Now, whistles do get clogged the more you play them. Some whistles and some materials clog more easily for some people than others, and some of us are wet whistlers. So I have done my research online for you guys and accumulated all the tips and tricks that I can find that will help to declog your whistles and allow you to play perfectly for longer. So let's get started. Tip number one is to simply warm up your whistle. Now I know this is the basics and it's obvious, but some of you guys are missing this step at the moment and it is so simple. So all you need to do is cover the little opening on the mouthpiece with your finger and blow through the top of your whistle. Doing this a few times will warm your whistle up before you start playing and it gets your whistle accustomed to the temperature of air that you're going to be blowing through it. So the condensation that's going to build up in there isn't going to be as great as if you just start playing your whistle cold. And this is because obviously the temperature in the whistle is matching the temperature of the air you're putting into it. It's like demisting your car windscreen. When you get in, you steam it up because you're hotter than the outside. It is the same principle. So simples so simples? Simples. <laughs> so a simple way to start is by warming up your whistle. Cover the hole on the mouthpiece and blow a few times before you play. Tip number two, the air temperature that you put into your whistle. Now, a lot of whistles um, don't stay warm. So what you can do is you can adjust the temperature of the air that you put into the whistle. And this is particularly helpful if you are a very wet whistler. Now, if you're using hot air, um, and you breathe onto your hand with an open mouth and a deep breath, you get hot air on your hand. You can cool that air down by pursing your lips and blowing a more direct air stream. So you can try this on your hand and test the temperature of air you're blowing into your whistle. So with a narrower stream and a faster speed, you can feel that you can blow cold air onto your hand. So you can actually change the temperature of air that you're blowing into your whistle. So for example, if the air around you is colder or you haven't had a chance to warm your whistle up as much, or you're having particular problems with clogging in a specific location or on a specific day, you can change the air temperature going into your whistle. So for example, hot air. Cold air. So if you find that you in particular are struggling with clogging, try adjusting the temperature of your air in the whistle and see what works best. Tip number three. Now, going back to warming up the whistle, you can keep your whistle warm during sessions by using a hot water bottle. If you heat this up and you lay your whistle on it during the performance, make sure it's not too hot because you don't want to be melting or warping your whistle. But during your performance, this will keep your whistle at a warmer temperature if there are times when you're not using it. Now, I personally prefer to use um, a heated sort of rice or wheat bag as obviously this is tin whistle shaped and there's a nice indent here for your whistle. Super cool. Ta -da! And your whistle ends up on its own little heated cushion. Now this is great, as I said, for keeping your whistle warm in between sets that you're playing. And uh, yeah, especially if you're recording or if you're playing live, this is a really helpful tip. So go for a heated wheat bag, microwave it not too hot, and this will help keep your whistle warm. Tip four, for particularly wet blowers, the angle of your whistle can help to prevent clogging for a little bit longer. If you think your problem is with saliva and that seems to be dripping out from the whistle or running down the whistle or coming out the bottom of the whistle, then it might be that you're simply blowing or allowing a little bit too much saliva to enter the whistle. Obviously, some people can't help this. It's just the way our mouths are made. But um, the angle that you hold your whistle might help. So if you think of gravity is going to be drawing all the moisture downwards while you're playing, if you're a particularly wet whistler, all that moisture is going to clog in the mouthpiece if you're holding your whistle downwards. So holding your whistle at a more straight angle might basically mean that you blow less saliva into your whistle. It might mean that you clog your whistle far easier because the saliva doesn't come out, but it might be worth trying. If you think your 
forcing too much spit and saliva into your whistle, try adjusting the angle of your playing. So rather than straight down, you could play straight out. Tip number five, adjust the position of the whistle in your mouth. And again, for very wet whistlers, this might make the difference. Most people play by placing the mouthpiece on the bottom lip. Now, if you put this mouthpiece too far into your mouth, you will accumulate a lot more wetness than if it's placed on the outside. So for example, if you play here, you're going to be allowing your spittle to smother the outside and the inside of the whistle, the back, the front, everywhere. So make sure the whistle mouthpiece is positioned perfectly sort of on the outside of your mouth, nowhere near the spit. Also, if you find that your direct air throw, air throw, air throw. Also, if you find that your direct air <laughs> also, if you find that your direct airflow through the center of your mouth is causing a lot of spit and saliva gather up in the mouthpiece, then you can also play from the side. Now, I've seen a lot of whistlers do this. It does slightly affect the amount of air pressure and the uh, directness of your airflow, but it might help with saliva and clogging if you play from the side of your mouth. <laughs> Next up, we have the tips that are actually uh, changing the way your whistle reacts to moisture. So the first tip is to use, ah, I've lost it, <laughs> waxed dental floss. Now, um, there is some dispute whether this is a good idea, um, partly because once you've waxed the inside of your whistle, the wax makes it difficult to remove because it's kind of not water soluble. So. Um, there may be a buildup of wax, which then may cause problems with the clogging and the sound of your whistle. But I've not tried and tested this, so I couldn't say whether this works or whether this causes problems long term. But some people have had a lot of success with waxed dental floss. So simply what you do is you grab a piece of the floss and you want to line the inside of the windway with the wax on the floss. So simply thread the wax gently down through the mouthpiece, avoiding touching the blade entirely, and then simply and very gently rub back and forth. And this will coat the inside of the windway with wax. The next tip is to use toothpaste. Now with toothpaste, you need um, the plain white variety, nothing with crystals or any grit inside it. Um, but basically what this does is the surfactant stops, kind of basically stops the water clinging to your whistle. So yeah, discourages clogging and it tastes nice and minty fresh and it lasts, lasts, it lasts, it lasts for quite a while. Um, basically all you do is you get a small amount of the toothpaste on a piece of card or possibly a piece of credit card or credit card. Um, and then you polish the inside of your whistle mouthpiece with this. Now I chose not to use credit card because I didn't want to risk damaging the plastic mouthpiece on this whistle by using hard plastic. Um, and I just find that a soft card or very thick or glossy piece of paper works better and you're not going to damage your instrument in any way. Be sure to stay away from the blade because any adjustment to the blade could affect the playability of your whistle. Um, so yeah, you're just covering the top of the mouthpiece here. And as I said, a very small amount of toothpaste and you basically need to polish the inside of the whistle. The final tip I have for you today is simply dish soap. Now this doesn't have the same nice fresh taste as toothpaste, but it might possibly work for a little bit longer. Um, but the same principle, uh, the surfactant stops the water from <laughs> clinging to the inside of your whistle and uh, yeah basically reduces and in some cases completely eliminates all your clogging problems now it's simple enough you'll need a glass of water and a little bit of one-stop lemon washing up liquid this is a local brand and basically all you need is to pop a little bit in the water 
give it a stir and dip your whistle in. Now, if you're playing um, in front of an audience, you can have a little glass next to you um, and you can dip your whistle in. Make sure you've got something on hand to wipe the whistle clean. And in most cases, what you do is you do this at home before you go. And uh, basically you could use warm water then with your dish soap, and then you could gently swill the top with cool water, which would mean that you weren't putting dish soap in your mouth. If you do play a lot, you might get a few bubbles, especially if your uh, water to dish soap ratio is a little too strong on the dish soap side. So you only need a few drops to make this work. And uh, yeah, I can already see that I'm going to blow a bubble. Um, after that, you're ready to play. So that's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed these tips. I hope you try them out and find them useful. If you do try them, do let us all know in the comments below how you got on, which tips worked for you and which ones were your favorite. Uh, don't forget that depending on your whistle, um, some of these tips might not be perfect. All of these are safe to use on plastic whistle heads, and I think all of them are safe to use on metal whistle heads. But if you do have um, wooden whistles, you need to be very careful with wetting the wood. So I wouldn't recommend the dish soap for wooden whistles. Um, you might be better off, I think, with a wooden whistle, perhaps with the toothpaste method. Uh, certainly better off trying to adjust your airflow, keep the whistle warm, um, the angle of your playing and the position in your mouth. All those will help more with wooden whistles. But of course, try not to get those wooden whistles wet as this will warp and damage the whistle and destroy your playability and your sound. But yeah, plastic whistles, metal whistles, you shouldn't have any problem. Make sure to keep them clean and you guys will be playing beautifully. I know it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have suggestions for other videos, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check me out on Coffee and Patreon. You guys have been incredible on there the last few weeks. So hopefully that means I'll be able to afford some new whistles to show you guys again soon. We're getting there just about, so fingers crossed. Um, if you have suggestions again for whistles that you'd like to see me play, let me know in the comments, requests, anything you like. Don't forget to check out my other videos here on YouTube. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button down below and share the hell out of this, guys, because we're on 23 and a half thousand followers now, so I want to get to 100,000. Let's do this. <laughs> Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, happy whistling.